Hello, and welcome to this presentation of the STM32 General Purpose I.O. interface. It covers the general purpose input and output interface and how it allows connectivity to the environment around the microcontroller. General Purpose I.O. pins of STM32 products provide an interface with the external environment. This configurable interface is used by the MCU and also all other embedded peripherals to interface with both digital and analog signals. Application benefits include a wide range of supported I.O. supply voltages, as well as the ability to externally wake up the MCU from low power modes. General Purpose I.O. provides bi-directional operation, input and output, with independent configuration for each I.O. pin. They are shared across up to nine ports named GPIO-A to GPIO-I, each of them hosting up to 16 I.O. pins. I.O. ports support atomic bit set and reset operation through BSSRR and BRR registers and support the use of bit banding in the memory map. I.O. ports are directly connected to the AHB2 bus. This allows fast I.O. pin operations, such as toggling of the pin every two clock cycles. Most of the I.O. pins are 5 volt tolerant when supplied from VDD I.O. X above 1.6 volts. Up to 14 I.O. pins are supplied by externally providing a voltage within the VDD I.O. 2 supply domain. This supply is independent of the VDD provided to the part. This functionality allows users to adapt logic levels of the MCU's I.O. pins to the levels required by external logic, which may be supplied by different voltage domains without need for external level shifters. General purpose I.O. pins can be configured into several operating modes. An I.O. pin can be configured in an input mode with floating input, input mode with an internal pull-up or pull-down resistor, or as an analog input. An I.O. pin could also be configured in an output mode with a push-pull output or an open drain output with an internal pull-up or pull-down resistor. For each I.O. pin, the slew rate speed can be selected from four ranges to compromise between maximum speed and emissions from the I.O. switching and adjust the application's EMI performance. I.O. pins are also used by other integrated peripherals to interface with the external environment. Alternate function registers are used to select the configuration for the peripherals in this case. Configuration of the I.O. ports can be locked to increase robustness of the application. Once the configuration is locked by applying the correct write sequence to the lock register, the I.O. pin's configuration cannot be modified until the next reset. Several integrated peripherals such as the USART, timers, SPI, and others share the same I.O. pins in order to interface with the external environment. Peripherals are configured through an alternate function multiplexer, which ensures that only one peripheral is connected to the I.O. pin at a single time. Of course, this selection can be changed during runtime of the application through the GPIOX, AFRL, and AFRH registers. The independent VDDIO2 supply domain allows operation in an environment with several different logic supply voltages. It allows the STM32 to communicate with logic supplied from 1.08 volts, much lower than the VDD supply of the STM32, which can range up to 3.6 volts. Up to 14 I.O. pins in this domain can be used to communicate with other logic circuits, which are supplied by voltage rails other than VDD. Independent voltage supplies may allow for the omission of external voltage shifters in the design. During and after reset, the alternate functions or AFs are not active. Only debug pins remain in AF mode. JTAG SWD debug pins remaining in AF configuration mode are listed in this slide. When the external oscillator is switched off, pins related to this oscillator can be used as standard I.O. pins. This is the default state after device reset. When the external clock source is used instead of a crystal oscillator, only related OSC in or OSC 32 in pins are used for the clock, and OSC out or OSC 32 out pins can be used as standard I.O. pins. 
The new GPIO-X ASCR control register has been introduced on STM32L47X48X devices to control analog interconnection between an I.O. pin and ADC input. This register has to be configured before the ADC conversions are started to correctly bring the signal to the ADC input. This register is removed on other categories of STM32L4 devices, and the analog interconnection will be enabled automatically when an ADC channel is selected. A new multi-supply scheme of I.O. pins brings new I.O. pin structures. Previously used naming, FT, TT, has been extended by abbreviation suffixes to highlight alternate supply sources for each FT and TT I.O. pin. Previously used name, FTF, for FM Plus capable pins, has been transformed to FT underscore F. The new underscore L suffix has been added to mark pins supplied through LCD supply. Suffix underscore A marks pins supplied by analog supply. Suffix underscore U is used for pins supplied from USB supply, and suffix underscore S now clearly identifies pins within the independent VDDIO2 supply domain. The absolute maximum rating for each I.O. pin is defined by the lowest voltage of the supplies listed for each I.O. pin. I.O. pins remain active in all modes except standby and shutdown, where the only available configuration is input with internal pull-up, Pull down resistor or floating input. When exiting shutdown mode, the I.O. configuration is lost. When the MCU is under reset, I.O. pins are forced into an analog input mode. This slide presents the key differences between baseline STM32L47X48X devices and other devices. Compared to STM32L47X48X devices, STM32L43X, 44X, 45X, and 46X devices have up to 83 GPIOs, and STM32L41X and 42X devices have up to 52 GPIOs. They no longer have GPIOs connected to an independent power supply, VDDIO2, and the GPIOX ASCR register, enabling an analog switch connected to the ADC inputs, is no longer present.